Okay, welcome back. In a nation of corruption, crime, criminality, gangsterism, psychopathy, and much more. Other than that, it's a great place. We have another nightmare to discuss. It's called guardianship. There's so much going on in this one that it's going to be hard for you, in some cases, to believe it. Back with us tonight to talk about this, Marty Oakley. All right, so guardianship. Gee, it sounds so sounds so nice. Take care <laughs> of things and absolutely it's, it's protect It's the last you. place you want to be. Yeah. Um, what I have found out about guardianship in the last seven to eight months, and it's going on in every state, uh, it is well known by the federal and state government. And the GAO has issued a report since 2000 every year about the fraud being perpetrated under the guise of guardianship. And I think what people need to understand is that when you're put under a guardianship, or it may be called conservatorship in your Mm -hmm. state, Mm -hmm. you become a ward of the state, and as such, you are dead in the law. Every state has dead man statutes. And this means that you cannot speak to the court, you cannot speak for yourself. You have to have someone else speak for you. You have no right. And what we've seen happen is that people have been targeted in every state who have large estates. They're elderly in most cases. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of assets. They're targeted. Um, they wait for them to come into the system. Uh, they might slip and fall at home. They, yeah, uh, sure might become ill with the flu and go to the hospital, and suddenly a predatory guardian appears out of nowhere because right. their contact at the hospital called and flagged this patient. It's almost like ambulance chasing. Yes. Yes, it is. And these are these are these um, these people work and do this constantly, and you'll see the same judge uh-huh. working with the same attorneys, oh, with the geez. same predatory guardians, yeah. with the same social, social service personnel, Uh the same nursing homes over and over and over again. Well, it's a national system of theft is what it is, Uh, larceny, robbery, uh, whatever you want. And that's exactly what what it is, is a system of theft. Our elderly, the ones they're targeting right now, are the last holders of any real property in this country. They Uh Uh, are people that came out of the Great Depression or were born right right after it. They know what it's like to have to live frugally, and they have done so all of their lives. They've acquired land. They might have some liquid assets and investments, uh, but they have an estate that's usually worth a considerable amount. Once these people are targeted and this predatory guardian is given control over them, Mm -hmm. Uh, they can't, like I say, they have no rights. They cannot speak. And one of the most common ways of um, getting the guardianship made permanent is to declare the person incompetent. Oh, yeah. And this is done systematically, state to state. They Physically or mentally, it doesn't matter. There are a lot of different ways they can do that. Uh, yes. You don't have to be declared terminal Alzheimer's to be put into the incompetent category. This is this is really horrible because when when our older folks are gone, then their control will be complete because our younger people are coming out of college. Those who bother to go on the average of between thirty five and forty thousand dollars in debt. Some are one hundred thousand in debt or more college loans, student loans. They'll never get out. Uh, We're creating a nation of indentured servants of really uh, chained sheep. Uh, They're not just sheep anymore. They're chained. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. Now, guardians. Well, it's not what you know; it's who you know. And look, this is this is truly a system that is unknown to most Americans. It is outrageous. In a time of outrageous things, this one is huge. I wonder how much every year is actually looted from our seniors and younger people too. It doesn't have to necessarily be older folks. It's got to be well, in, in the, the last- hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more. Well, in the last GAO report issued in 2010, they said they looked at only 15 cases across 12 states. And just on those cases, $54 million in assets were looted from the estates of people who had been taken prisoner. And that's something else people have to understand here. Uh These people many times are kidnapped from their home by the police. 
and taken and put into? I, the, the pre-selected facility that yep. cooperates with the predatory guardian and in keep the court. Them, keep them drugged and medicated into oblivion. Yes. Basically, they give them a fast track to, to slide on out of here. I've heard yes, too many. or the person conveniently dies within yeah, yeah. a couple of hours of that last dollar being bled off. That quickly, And within huh? a couple hours after that, somehow they're mm. cremated. Mm-hmm. And the family mm-hmm. is never told for two weeks or a month. No That's autopsy. Another, no tests, nothing. So this is what they do to these people. And my say uh, important to all of this is isolating this victim from their family and friends and anyone who, that cared about them. And then, of course, they convince the victim, nobody cares about you. You see, nobody's here. And it, it is one of the most horrendous things I have seen going on when I actually got into digging around and looking at how bad this was. What goes on in these probate courts, every one of these judges ought to be frog-marched into prison and never let out. I have seen court rulings where people are, are prevented are by court order from contacting the police and reporting the, the abuse of their elderly or loved one that's in one of these institutions, from reporting to the district attorney and asking that charges be filed. Uh, Rulings that tell them that they can't file any motions, they can't present any evidence, they can't say anything, they can't do anything. I've seen rulings, I have rulings laying right here, where when a a predatory guardian was not reporting to the court Mm -hmm. like they were supposed to on how money was administered from the estate, where it went, what was done with it, Mm -hmm. when the victim's family said, we want an accounting, the judge held them in contempt of court... (laughs) and issued a ruling giving the predatory guardian immunity from being prosecuted for not following state mandates. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. And And I can document every bit of this. I have it laying right here. The things that have gone on in these courts, they won't allow evidence. I had one fellow on the show, on my own show, Mm -hmm. when we were doing guardianship abuse from Iowa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He tried repeatedly to present evidence in the probate court that his mother was being administered Zyprexa and it was killing her. And the judge refused to let that evidence in. This is also a chronic thing in these cases. Any evidence that would refute the allegations of the predatory guardian... It's barred, I understand. Yep, is, it, uh, they are won't these, let it in. Are these, they, uh, not, got, they won't look at it, they won't consider it, nothing. We have to take a break. And, are, uh, are, but briefly, are these judges specializing in guardianship or are they just run-of-the-mill superior court and circuit court judges they're they're all what they call special court and okay. they're a spin-off oh my. Of, mm-hmm. and get, because the it. state court load was so heavy in all states supposedly they created mm-hmm. these special courts and that's so they made it easier for them i got it yeah. all right <laughs> hold that's on a sec family court comes yeah. in and divorce court comes in yep. and yep. you know and probate yep. and probate uh, probate court can only become active upon presentation of a death certificate. The probable deaths, as in murder, certainly hastening the end of uh, uncountable numbers of Americans over the years, this is a a structured part of American jurisprudence, I guess you could call it that. Uh, These are guardianship-oriented courts in every state in the Union. Every city basically has one. They must have conventions, these crooks, and get together and compare notes. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, this whole thing is so preposterous, you can't, you can't believe it, but it's all true. And those of you listening who have been involved with this issue is amazing. Now, this guardianship issue, we're going to talk about probate in just a minute, but it does extend down to child custody issues, does it not? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And there's a lot of money to be made off those kids. Uh, If people knew the system that was in place behind the state taking custody of a child or putting it under guardianship, the money that's generated from one child is just phenomenal between federal funding, state funding, uh, various agency fundings. what we had going on down in Florida and Alaska, the two worst states, but it was happening in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and other states, was they were taking foster children who were wards of the state, therefore dead in the law, 
having no rights whatsoever, treated as human property, and they were leasing them out to these big pharmaceutical companies for testing of psychotropic drugs. Uh. And it wasn't until several children died in Florida as a result that this came to light, that this is what they were, they were literally leasing the kids out. And when Florida attempted to pass a law making it illegal to test drugs on children, the FDA showed up down there and loaded them with a bunch of money, and, of course, they backed down on it. But this is what happens to the elderly. Um, one of the things I want to warn people about, and it's, it's become quite prolific here in the last few months, and that is there's a lot of solicitation by mail, in newspapers, on the radio, about come to these uh, meetings uh, and discuss estate planning, and we can help you set up, you know, and avoid conservatorship yes, yes. Oh, and yes. guardianship, and we can right. set up trusts and wills, and, and that way you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Let me tell you, that's a load of crap. And what those meetings are is a databasing, is they're collecting information uh -huh. for later use. They're just finding out who's who, who has what, and they're collecting that information. They wait for you to come into the system through one one vehicle or another. So they're profiling in advance. Very clever. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you accumulate anything, you're fair game. And what people are beginning to do is transfer now title to property, access to accounts, investments, so on and yeah. so forth. Before. Um, uh -huh. Before this happens. Yeah. Um, it's the only way they can protect their elderly parents or grandparents, whomever it is. And once the the money, the asset motivation is removed, it seems the vultures fly the coop. Um, I consider this uh, uh, one of the most predatory activities I've ever seen. We talk about human trafficking, and people always talk about it in the context of trafficking for sex. But there's all kinds of human trafficking going on as we've been rendered commodities by a global cabal, whatever's going on there. And so everybody is fair game, and it's, it's what are you worth in this system? How much value do you have if we get possession of you? And that's something else people need to understand. Let's say they take Grandma and they kidnap her from her home. Right. Uh, we have a recording of one lady in Colorado where the police were battering down her door. She was 92 years old. She's on the phone screaming for help that somebody's breaking in. Call the police. Call the police. It's the police breaking in her house. They take this woman out of the house in handcuffs. Well, they'll be sending SWAT teams her next. Nursing home where she's immediately mm -hmm. drugged because she was hysterical. And there's nothing that the family can do about it. Nope, nope. And immediately, if they try to protest or do anything, charges are levied against them. Uh, you're a threat to this person. You, the neighbors said that you, you know, you were abusive. The neighbors never said anything. Oh, this is evil. Evil yes. stuff. And, um, and now, see, you have to defend yourself from these charges. Yep. yep. And the guardian, the predatory guardian, and the attorneys on that side can go into these courtrooms and make the most outrageous allegations, and they're accepted by the court. And you can't, there's not much you can do to refute that. And even when these charges are proven to be unfounded, it remains in the probate case but it never shows the dismissal of charges. It shows that the charge was levied, but never that it was dismissed as unfounded.